friends! Welcome to Beautiful Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I am doing another installment in my series of 21 most anticipated books in a genre for 2021. In today's video we are going to be talking about my 21 most anticipated sci-fi books. Okay, so if you have not seen the other videos yet, I will link them up above. I have a video talking about 21 most anticipated romance novels. I've got a video with my 21 most anticipated fantasies. In this video, we're talking about sci-fi. And then I plan on having probably one more installment where I talk about like thrillers and horror and historical fiction that didn't fit into any of these categories. So let's go ahead and jump into this. There is one book on this list that we don't have a firm date for yet. I am really hoping we get it next year because I want it. So I'm putting on this list. It's my wish list. <laughs> this is Furious Heaven by Kate Elliott. It's the sequel to Unconquerable Sun. I think originally we were supposed to get this in 2020. That clearly didn't happen, probably because of COVID, I'm guessing. But I loved Unconquerable Sun. I want to see more people reading it and talking about it. It's her gender flipped Alexander the Great in space. It's phenomenal. And I want the next book. So moving on let's take a look at January I've got two releases to talk about there and let me just say if it feels like these books are all weighted to the earlier part of the year like the first half of it that's because they are <laughs> we don't have as much information about books coming in the later part of the year yet so I'm sure there will be others but based on the information I have currently this is the list I put together like N.K. Jemisin will probably put a book out next year but nothing's been announced yet if it had been that would be on this list and maybe by the time this video goes up it will have been announced and I'll be like dang it that should have been on my list but it's it's fine. Okay let me go to January. So we have some like pretty exciting things coming out this year actually. First up we have Persephone Station by Stina Liked. I'll be honest with you a lot of this is the cover. I love the cover it's super striking and it does sound interesting. It's from a Hugo Award nominated author who's created a space opera for fans of The Mandalorian and Cowboy Bebop in this high stakes adventure. Persephone Station, a seemingly backwater planet that has largely been ignored by the United Republic of Worlds, becomes the focus for the Sarau or Lav Corporation as the planet has a few secrets the corporation tenaciously wants to exploit. Rosie, owner of Monk's Bar in the corporate town of West Brenner, caters to wannabe criminals and rich earther tourists. Then we have a ex-marine. It, it looks like it's going to be fun. It's got like kind of a western space adventure feel to it. It's got a fantastic cover. This is definitely one I'm interested in. And that one is coming out January 5th. Then the other one in January is coming out on the 19th. This is a novella through Tor.com. It's Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor. I'm going to discover now <laughs> as I'm looking at this what it's about. I just know I love Nnedi Okorafor. She is one of the most imaginative writers out there in my opinion. And uh, let's see. She's the adopted daughter of the Angel of Death. Beware of her. Mind her. Death guards her like one of its own, and she walks alone except for her fox companion searching for the object that came from the sky and gave itself to her when the meteors fell and when she was yet unchanged searching for answers. So this is really interesting. I like obviously we're not getting a ton of information here, but I love Nettie's writing. I think she's super imaginative and just does so much world building in such a small space definitely one I want to read. Then on February 2nd we've got two books coming out. First up is A History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nouvelle. This one looks really interesting. It's a sci-fi thriller reminiscent of Blake Crouch and Andy Weir blending a fast-moving darkly satirical look at 1940s rocketry with an exploration of the amorality of progress and the nature of violence. Sounds very intriguing for sure. That day we are also getting Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. I think I'm supposed to be getting an arc of this one in the mail. It's pitched as Ancillary Justice meets Red, White, and Royal Blue. Interesting. It's a debut novel with a male-male romance involving an arranged marriage in space royalty and has some political machinations going on. This one sounded really intriguing so I'm going to be reading that one. Then on February 9th is a YA sci-fi 
sort of that looks interesting. This is called The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. Again, love the cover of this one. So this one is interesting. It's kind of a post-apocalyptic story where there's been a virus that's killed off a bunch of people and the main character has to survive and navigate the woods of a post-apocalyptic New England. And I want to say this has portals in it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so it sounds, it looks interesting. Then February 16th, we have The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. So this is interesting. It's a thriller that they're saying is good for readers of Big Little Lies and enthusiasts of Killing Eve and Westworld. Martine is a genetically cloned replica made from Evelyn Caldwell's award-winning research. She's patient and gentle and obedient. She's everything Evelyn swore she'd never be. And she's having an affair with Evelyn's husband. Now the cheating bastard is dead and the Caldwell wives have a mess to clean up. Really interesting where the wife has a clone of herself who is cheating with the husband. Like, yeah, I have an arc of this one. It's going to be interesting, guys. And then the last one for February is coming out on the 23rd from Tor.com. This is Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by Amy Ogden. It's a novella that looks interesting about gene-edited human clans that have scattered throughout the galaxy, adapting themselves to environments as severe as the desert and the sea. Um, so the main character is the daughter of a sea clan lord and her husband and his clan are dying of an incurable plague and she has to travel off planet in search of a cure. Moving on to March. On March 2nd we have three books coming out that I'm excited for. <laughs> First up is A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. This is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire, which I loved. If you like more politically driven science fiction, this is phenomenal. It's got a lot of court politics in it and just the detail is so good. I was really, really into it. I'm definitely interested in reading the next book in the series. I think it's a duology. I'm not sure. But but also like a lot happens at the end of the first book and so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in book two. Then we've got Machinehood by S.B. Divya. I'm curious to see reviews of this one before I pick it up but the premise is really interesting. It says Zero Dark Thirty meets the social network in this science fiction thriller about artificial intelligence, sentience, and labor rights in a near future dominated by the gig economy. Um, really curious to see what people are saying about that one. And then one that looks amazing. This is In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. It's about an ambitious female astronaut whose life is upended by a fiery love affair that threatens the rescue of a lost crew. It says that this is a novel in the tradition of Station Eleven and The Martian. Looks great. Definitely want to read that one. Then on March 9th is a YA sci-fi. This is Fragile Remedy by Maria Ingrande Mora. I think this one might be a debut, but don't quote me on that. I might, I'm not sure. 16 year old Nate is a gem, genetically engineered meta tissue created by the scientists of Gatho City as a cure for the elite from the fatal lung rot ravaging the population. As a child, he was smuggled out of the laboratory where he was held captive and into the Withers, a quarantined lawless region. Nate manages to survive by using his engineering skills to become a tinker, fixing broken tech in exchange for food or a safe place to sleep. When he meets Reed, a kind and fiercely protective boy that makes his heart race and his misfit gang of scavengers, Nate finds the family he's always longed for, even if he can't risk telling them what he is. Um, and then his health starts declining, so that, that sounds definitely intriguing. Then on March 23rd is The Fall of Coley by M.R. Carey. This is the third book in a series. I've not read these books yet, but I want to. <laughs> It's a sci-fi series that's set in a dystopian future where people no longer understand how science works and plants have kind of taken over the planet. The Book of Coley, like the first book in the series, is on my like I want to buy it soon and read it list. So I'm putting the third book, <laughs> putting the third book on here. <sighs> Whew. Okay, we're getting there guys. Moving on to April. I have one, two, three, four, five books in April. <laughs> A lot earlier in the year. Okay, so first up, on April 6th, we've got two books coming out. Both of these are YA. The first one is kind of a light sci-fi. It's The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. 
She wrote Slay, which I really loved. It was another one that was kind of a contemporary sci-fi blend, and I think this one is similar. It's saying it's Dear Martin meets They Both Die at the End in this gripping evocative novel about a black teen who has the power to see into the future, whose life turns upside down when he foresees his younger brother's imminent death. Uh, yeah, so this sounds interesting. From what I've heard her say, it's gonna probably be kind of rip your heart out sort of book, but it's got some light sci-fi elements to it. Then another YA one that looks interesting, I think this is YA, yeah, uh, is The Infinity Courts by Akemi Don Bowman. It's got a great cover. So it follows an 18 year old girl who's got her whole life ahead of her, she's headed to a party, she's got a boyfriend, and then she's murdered before she gets there and wakes up in a place called Infinity, where human consciousness goes when physical bodies die. She discovers that Ophelia, a virtual assistant widely used by humans on Earth, has taken over the afterlife and is now posing as a queen, forcing humans into servitude. So that one sounds very intriguing. I like to see a solid YA sci-fi because sometimes we don't get great ones, but this sounds really interesting. April 20th, we've got two books coming out. First up is The Last Watch by J.S. Dews. This one is being pitched as The Expanse meets Game of Thrones in a fast-paced sci-fi adventure. Sounds very intriguing. A handful of soldiers stand between humanity and annihilation. The Divide. It's the edge of the universe. Now it's collapsing and taking everyone and everything with it. The only ones who can stop it are the Sentinels, the recruits, exiles, and court-martial dregs of the military. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that one sounds definitely interesting if it's kind of sci-fi with a lot of grand politics is what I'm guessing if they're comping it to Game of Thrones, but sometimes they just comp everything to Game of Thrones, so we'll see. And then the same day we're also getting The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. This is book four in the Wayfarer series, which I know I need to continue on with. I read the first one and I loved it. I want to keep reading in the series and good reason to do so. Then lastly for April, on April 27th, we have Fugitive Telemetry, the next book in the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. I mean, this is an auto read for me. I love Murderbot. Also, my children are now home. So if you hear them in the background, I got through, this is my third video. So we're doing good today. Um, but yeah, the Murderbot Diaries are amazing. Murderbot is such a great character and this is playing with really interesting ideas of AI and personhood and what it means to be human, but with this like wonderfully snarky character who you're in the head of and space adventures. It's great. A few more to go, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> um, okay, I've got one book for June. And this is coming out on June 1st. It's another YA sci-fi that's like sci-fi-ish. It's about two boys stuck alone in space. So this is like a sci-fi YA romance slash coming of age story and they're enemies. So it, th this does sound pretty intriguing. It says, after the first settler on Titan trips her distress signal, neither remaining country on earth can afford to scramble the rescue of its own kind. And so two sworn enemies are installed in the same spaceship. Ambrose wakes up on the coordinated endeavor with no memory of a launch. There's more that doesn't add up. Evidence indicates strangers have been on board. The ship's operating system is voiced by his mother, and the handsome, brooding shipmate has barricaded himself away. But nothing will stop Ambrose from making his mission succeed, not when he's rescuing his own sister. Um, so this sounds really interesting. It's part love story, part mystery, but all set in space, so that seems like it's going to be another solid YA option. Okay, and then finally I have two books coming out in July and that is it. First up we have one that I'm putting in this category. It's kind of more of a superhero thing, but it's based on science, so I'm calling it sci-fi. This is Flash Fire by TJ Klune, the second book in his Extraordinaries series. This is YA, queer, superhero stuff. I really loved book one and I thought it was hilarious. It made me laugh and it had great characters. And I, I'm curious to see where book two goes. I feel like book one stands alone very well, but like, I'm, I'm interested. I wanna see where it's gonna go. And then the final book on this list is the first in a new series from Becky Chambers. This is called A Psalm for the Wild Built, first book in the Monk and Robot series. It calls it a delightful new series that gives us hope for the future. It's been centuries since the robots of Earth gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness, never to be seen again. One day the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot, there to honor the old promise of checking in. 
The robot cannot go back until the question of what do people need is answered. But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. This series asks, in a world where people have what they want, does having more matter? Whew, we did it guys. So there you go. Those are my 21 most anticipated sci-fi releases for 2021. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books that I talked about. And for your question of the day, let me know what is one of your most anticipated 2021 sci-fi releases. Is there something that I missed that you would have put on this list? Is it something on the list? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon in the video description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.